Uh, that was a journey we went on. It's fantastic. Hi, all you BC WrestlePod nerds. And you might be wondering yourself, wait a minute. This isn't the usual look for the dynamic dominance trio of review. And you would be correct. To be full transparent here, we're recording via StreamYard because it is easier for me to edit because by the time this video goes up, which is tomorrow morning, I will be in the middle of the air flying towards my destination of New Jersey. The, some of the BC WrestlePod boys are going to be handling a table. I almost said something else, which out of context means <laughs> totally different things. But, you know, we're not going to talk about that. But hi, BC WrestlePod nerds out there. And as mentioned before, welcome to another dyna Dynamic Dominance Trio review for WWE NXT this week for Tuesday, May 14, 2024. I am your host, El Jefe Mikey, around these BC WrestlePod parts. I am the man with half a plan and the face that somewhat runs the place. And joining me, as always, is my two lovely co-hosts. First and foremost, Papa himself, Will, is here with the lovely background. Check it out. It's so, it's so pretty. We're actually kind of official now. So shout out to Will and his artist friend for getting all that done for us. It is a beautiful thing. And then, of course, joining us, as always, is the newest person here to our NXT reviews. But we love him. And this is my favorite review team. Don't tell the other boys. But anyways, Mr. A to Z himself, Andrew, thank you for joining us once again for an interesting episode of NXT. You're muted, bud. <laughs> I thought your favorite team would be the TNA review team. I mean, they also are, which, you know, funny <laughs> enough is us three. No, I love working with all the boys, but there's just something different about. I'm just, this is my favorite team because I didn't have to force anybody to review NXT and TNA with me because when we started this whole thing, it was just me. Happily doing NXT and TNA by myself. And then as time went on, I picked up Will. And we picked up Andrew to do NXT. And as in addition to TNA and ROH, which we love. All right. So the banter is done. We got to get into this episode because there was a lot that got thrown into my eyeballs last night. Lots of moving parts. Lots of setups. Because we are officially on the path to Battleground, which is happening in less than three weeks, which is crazy. We got another pay-per-view for NXT coming up in three weeks at Battleground in Las Vegas. I'm very interested to see the setup in the UFC, you know, Apex Center that they're using, but that's for a different time. So let's let's just jump into it. So I have said on multiple occasions that the NXT parking lot is where the craziest things in wrestling happen. People get ran over by cars, people getting jumped, people getting thrown off of buildings. There at one point somebody got set on fire. People are getting kidnapped in cars, as we saw last week. But I would be remiss if I said that the backstage of NXT is also kind of going up there in the most dangerous places in wrestling because we had a cold open where no one Dar just, like, got attacked backstage. First, it was Trick Williams, and then it was Carmelo Hayes. Now, it is Noam Dar. And as such, because Noam Dar got jumped backstage, we find out later in the show, and I'm not going, and I'm just going to say this here, that he can't compete. So Oro Mensa is going to be stepping up for Noam, and he's going to be taking on Javon Evans. Spoiler alert, I think that was kind of a good decision because that match banged, and we'll talk about that when we get there. No shade to Noam, but... Oro and Javon Styles kind of mesh well together, so I'm happy to see that. But we left Noam Dar being beat up backstage, and we literally head into the first segment. It's like, all right, we just saw somebody get beat up backstage. But let's talk about this NXT Women's North American Championship qualifier match. I'm mad because they told us what all the matches were. I'm like, you couldn't have done some sort of similar graphic last week when you named who the top 12 were? I was so mad. Yeah. But I was so upset. I'm like, Ava, I don't know whether to blame you or to blame everybody else in NXT. But where were these graphics last week? You could have given to this last week instead of this week. But Ava goes through the list and we have all over the next couple of weeks, we have six matches. We have Sol Ruka taking on Izzy Dame, Lash Legend and Ivy Nile, which are taking place this week. Next week, we have Thea Hale versus Fallon Henley, which should be a really good match. Jada Parker versus Brindley Reese. That should also be a good one for next week. And then the final two matches is going to be, and I'm mad that they put my two favorites against each other, Meechin versus Tatum Paxley and Kalani Jordan versus Ren Sinclair. I'm going to be honest. I think the match I'm most anticipating, hopefully if it's given time, Thea versus Fallon and Meechin versus Tatum is what I'm really interested to see. But I think for the most part, they kind of paired everyone off 
as best as they could. <laughs> yeah, I was surprised because I was thinking that Fallon and Thea were going to be in the ladder match. Yeah, I thought, what the heck? I was like, what? Why? Why? Why are they in such a rush? It's like, let it build, folks. Let it build. Yeah, like I said, I think I was really surprised with those matches, but also I feel that they kind of split everyone up. It was like, okay, I think you could tell who's going to win some of these matches, yeah. but I can also see like argument for you know, uh, for the other person to win. That wasn't the case with tonight's matches because I figured I knew who was going to win anyways, which we didn't have to wait long because after we get like this walk-in backstage segment from Sol Ruka, which I was like, I love you, Sol. She makes her entrance by walking on her hands. I'm just like, crown her now. Crown her North Women's <laughs> North American Champion right now. <laughs> she just has such an innate ability to be so charismatic. Mm -hmm. Like, it just oozes yeah. out of her. And for me personally, I might be biased because I love her finisher, but she's the whole package right now. And I think she's in one. Of, she's at the top of my list to be your inaugural in Women's North yep. American Champion. Yep, absolutely. And so she makes this entrance walking on her hands. The crowd's behind her. I'm behind her. And we get our first match of the evening for the qualifier, which is Sol Ruka versus Izzy Dame. I figured this match ended up going the way that I thought it was going yep. to. This is relatively short, four and a half, five minutes. Sol Ruka, again, hitting the Soul Snatcher for the win against Izzy. And Sol is the first yeah. woman to join that ladder match. Boys, this was a quick <clears throat> match, but what were our thoughts? Well, it went, yeah, I agree. It went exactly the way I thought it was uh, going to go. Yeah, I did like that they made, made Izzy look strong. You know, she she definitely dominated a lot of the match early on, and that Soul Snatcher counter was awesome. I love that they're figuring out ways for her to hit that move so many different ways, because it's being a corner move, it seems like it's one of those things where it's like, okay, well, you got to hit it here when no it's going to happen and all that kind of stuff. We've already seen three different ways in her three last matches, so it, it's awesome. I love the way that she's able to do that kind of stuff. You know, it just sort of feels like a setup, you know, you know? Like, oh, here's a she's a, yeah, she's just randomly fighting people no for no reason. And they're setting her up in these really great moments, having these really great so we can actually see what she's capable of. And I'm like, we know what you're doing. We see you. And I'm okay with it because I freaking love this woman. I'm like, yay. I didn't know much about her. And then I was like, every time I see her, every single time I see her wrestle, winning or losing, it's just wow. You go, girl. I agree. Again, she's at the top of my list to win this whole entire thing. But who knows? NXT has done crazier stuff before. But Sol Ruka is the first woman to advance to the ladder match happening at Battleground. Which then, as corny as this was, I kind of dug it. So we cut backstage with Ava and the family. So Ava's trying to be boss GM. And she's like, you can't be taking the referee out of matches like that. That's not how things are done here in NXT. And so the family, you know, kind of walks around the issue of it. So Ava decides, look, I should take your championship match away, but I'm not going to. Instead, I'm going to fine you twenty five, like twenty five thousand dollars. So I'm like, OK, like fines don't really mean anything in the world of professional wrestling. But you know what? Hey, I'm cool with it. And then the family proceeds to give Ava an envelope of twenty five thousand dollars. I'm like, are you? off is that what i'm witnessing right now like what is happening i was just like now i'm curious what are y'all doing in the background to get this kind of money the implications are wild yeah there's such stereotypes it's so bad like the faces that they were making like it was like they went and watched every mob movie and just picked out the most like over the top stereotypes and the fact that they picked twenty thousand dollars as the fine i was like that just makes it worse because it seems like so over the top it was just everything was just it was too much yep i'm really and and i know i've said it before i'm really getting tired of this stereotypical godfather i, I don't know at, at times it's a, it's fun but it's starting to get to that point where it's like oh okay another another stereotype here we go what italian stereotype are we doing today yeah they were kind of playing around with it you know once we first got introduced to tony i was like oh, okay this is kind of corny but i could dig with it now they went full ham with the whole thing i was like i kind of want that ham to be toned down a little bit it's it's definitely a thing. 
And we'll we'll talk about Tony a little bit later from this. So then we get go we go into another backstage segment with my favorite trio right now, Idris and Nofe, Malik Blade, and Brinley Reese. So we start with Malik and Idris, you know, getting ready for their tag team match later in the evening. And we see Malik rubbing a lucky rabbit's foot because now we have this whole superstition kind of angle going on. Again, this is corny and cheesy, but done the right way because then Brindley comes in like with her energetic self notices it it's like you don't need a lucky's rabbit foot you just need to believe in yourself let's go get this win I'm gonna come to you guys all right let's do this and you know we proceed to get our tag team match so I'm gonna do this the way that Andrew has yelled at me to do so because this is what was presented on our television screen so first it's, so the match itself is going to be OTM versus Malik and Idris, but we get OTM's entrance. Then we're backstage with Shane Baszler and Lola Vice who get interviewed. And then Armin comes out of nowhere and cold clocks Lola across the face. I'm like, if anybody's seen the movie Friday, it was the meme, Dane. And then Natalia joins in to hit Shayna. And then I love me some girl fights in NXT because they're literally using the door. They're using the stay. They're using everything. I'm like, this is not MMA, you guys. Like, I'm watching Carmen take Lola's head and just start bouncing it against the wall. I was like, what is happening? But if that means Shayna's going to fight some people in NXT, I'm here for it, <laughs> honestly. So that was chaotic. So then we get Idris and Malik's kind of entrance. They're already in the ring. I'm like, okay, th they're going to lose, aren't they? And sure enough, they did. But I got to say, I kind of like this match. And OTM actually wasn't too bad. I did like watching Jada and Brindley fight on the outside, though. <laughs> <laughs> that was probably the highlight. And the boys were like, all right, we got to pull them away. We got a tag team match, but we can't let these girls fight each other yet. I was like, damn, yeah. the women in NXT are out for blood tonight. The biggest takeaway I got from this match was looking forward to seeing the two of them fight next week. Because that, that match is going to have so much energy in it. At first, one of my issues with this match was more of NXT gear falling apart. But... I think it was actually purposeful this time. I think they're playing into this whole bad luck thing, which now that we're starting to see it actually take place, these backstage segments are starting to pay off. And the way that these three really play into this stuff, and they're so fun to watch, I'm excited mm -hmm. to see where we're going to go with this and what's going to come of that. I thought there were some rough spots in the actual tag match itself, but I know both teams are pretty, pretty new. They're pretty green. So overall, I thought it was a really good match. I thought they all had their spots to shine and i thought it was it made sense otm picked up the victory but enofe and blade lost because of basically like a wardrobe malfunction he had to stop because his shoes were falling off and then he got caught and so you know i don't feel like it took away anything from them especially because it ties into a story so i i, I enjoyed this match a lot and i cannot wait to see Parker and Reese fight each other. Oh, it's yeah. gonna be so much fun. Yeah, agreed. I the more I see, you know, Faye and Blade and Reese on my my TV, the more I love the trio. There's just something so chemistry perfect with them. So whoever in the grand scheme of the universe put those three together, well done. Because I'm always always interested in what they're doing when they're on the screen like so in this whole match i was constantly i kind of figured otm was gonna win and but it, I, I my eyes were like on them the whole time watching this the antics if i may use that word of that team and i just loved it and of course i agree the highlight was parker and reese going at it twice right when it twice they started and they broke them up yeah. and then they went again and i agree I, my my expectation of seeing the two those two going at it i'm i'm very excited about that but yeah I, I i enjoyed this i enjoyed the match it was a good match i'm not you know i'm not a big fan of otm i i just i just can't get on board with them you know and i mean now they're better with jada with jada parker in the mix they're a lot better than they used to be i know of everybody in that whole faction i've said it before Putting Jada Parker with them has probably been my favorite thing because, yep. you know, if we could get Jada to finish her, you know, change her finisher just a little bit, like pick something different or work on, you know, the rear end as, you know, finisher. She has everything else for me because she's athletic. She's got the personality. Like she take no crap from nobody, which I love. 
I just need her to get a better finish. But I love Jada, and I am excited for her match no. next week against Brindley. But it's interesting that now we're probably going to have OTM just be a trio because, as we found out a week or two weeks ago, Scripps contract is up with WWE, and they he's not going to renew it. So I'm just like, all right then. We'll see how that goes. But OTM pick up the victory here. And we head backstage where now we're in the medical office checking on <laughs> no one. I'm like, I had I went back through this episode to kind of just refresh my memory. And I'm like, no one Dar barely didn't even speak one word this whole entire episode, which is really weird. The other time he didn't speak was when he lost the Heritage Cup. But Oro and Jakara are checking on no one Dar. You see Lash and her baller like wrestling gear getting ready for her match and jakara asked her it's like why don't you think it was trick william well that's the other thing that bothered me about this whole thing i'm like y'all are really going to blame trick williams for attacking noam dar i was like did we not learn anything from the last couple of weeks it's really weird but i love last she's like look i can't do this right now i got a match so jakara are you coming or not and just leaves and then jakara proceeds to follow along Lead us into our next qualifier match. Miss Ivy Nile, nice to see her back in NXT. Missed her. Taking on Lash Legend. Again, this was another short match, but let, let me go through the thing again. So we get an Ivy Nile entrance. Then we get backstage where we have Ridge Holland talking to Axiom and Nathan Frazier. And once again, we're heavy handing this thing where I'm just like, the OC and Nathan and Axiom are going to collide at some point. I'm like, just... Just make it the match official for the tag titles. Like, stop walking around the issue. I also still don't understand what this whole storyline and gimmick is. It's like, yeah, NXT tag team should be the ones that go, oh, you know, for the tag titles. I'm like, sir, this is NXT. You are on SmackDown. Like, what, what are we talking about? They're like, how do I put this nicely? The OC right now are giving me, like cool dad vibes and not in the good way they're trying way too hard i'm like y'all are phoning it in just a little bit i need you yeah. to take it back a couple notches also carl anderson's tattoo or tattoo spray pen was uh, yeah it was a little glowy yeah never thought i would see the day that somebody would outdo bronze breaker i know right yeah. I'm just give me the match like we know this is where we're going just I'm going to talk, I'm going to save it for when we talk about the actual tag team match later that involves the OC, but I'm kind of really tired of our NXT teams being given, being eaten up by the OC. I'm just like, what is happening back there in NXT? Why are we giving a main roster tag team the run to go for these titles? Like, I don't get it, but whatever, it's neither here nor there. Because they're going to put them on Battleground. Yeah, that's the match we're getting. We'll, we'll talk about it when we get there because I'm not looking forward to that. But then we go back to Lash Legend making her entrance. I do appreciate the projection team when it's only two out of the four meters of Met metaphor. They time it differently for the colors to come up. I still think it's one of the coolest entrants right now NXT has. But Lash and Jakar come out, and we get another short match, as I mentioned. God, I missed Ivy on NXT television. She's not really doing too much. Well, she's doing stuff on Raw. She and Maxine are teamed up, but that's kind of a thing now that Chad Gable has gone heel and basically is berating all of Alpha Academy and told Ivy Nile that she needs to know her place and everything. I'm like, Ivy Nile will Break your arm, Chad Gable. You need to be careful. <laughs> I thought this was a really good match for both of them. I haven't actually seen many of Ivy Nile's full matches. Like, I've seen clips of her matches, but not watching Raw or the main roster at all. I, I haven't really seen much of her. So it was cool to get to see what she does. She obviously looks impressive. Lash always surprises me. You know, she's basically, you know, the, a big woman wrestler like the big men wrestlers and i always appreciate when the bigger wrestlers are athletic because i hate it's growing up with lots of big men who can barely walk let alone actually wrestle and watching this between the two of them i mean i looked up their heights and it was basically like if we saw the miz wrestle kane was the height difference between the two of them it was cool to see that and the way that Lash moves, you know, you know, she was obviously an athlete before getting into wrestling, so she's got a lot of athleticism to her. Super impressed. I've been impressed with 
everything I've seen from her. Yeah, I thought this was a good match for both of them, and it made Lash look strong going into this, because obviously she's going to be the big powerhouse threat in that ladder match. I thought, and I agree, I have to agree every time, the more and more I see Lash wrestle, the more and more impressed I am with her. She's a big gal. Man, she can move it in that ring i mean that's what i love about her is that yeah she's a she's a big she's a mover too i think she man she can zip around that that ring the i think she's gonna go all the way up and i mean i do and i hope so because ever since have ever since starting nxt and being introduced to uh metaphor i've always my eye has always been drawn to lash and then when i first saw her fight i was like ooh, okay she's not just a pretty face you know, she's, she's, and I love this and I love that she's in this, that we get to see more of her abilities. And, and I agree with Mikey. I, I've, she has grown so much in the little time that I've been doing this, that it's very, she's very impressive in the ring. I'm really proud to see, you know, the progression of Lash, especially when she started coming out on the screen. And when we started BC WrestlePod all the way back in, you know, last summer in June, she went, she has gone through a lot, big change, both character and in-ring wise, because she went from being a talk show host to being a bad girl with an attitude to being included in Metaphor. It is really fun to see Lash continue to evolve. And just as a minor pick, I think her and Trick Williams make a cute couple, but that's me. But you know it's about to go buck wild because we already got Soul and Lash in that match. I'm like, Soul Ruka's gonna hit a Soul Snatcher off the ladder. Somebody's <laughs> it's gonna be fantastic. Lash mm-hmm. Legend is gonna be throwing girls off ladders, which is gonna be fantastic to watch. I don't know what it is, man. NAC knows how to put on good ladder matches, and they picked the right two for this one. So mm-hmm. After this match, we go backstage with Mr. Bouncy himself. We got to make it bouncy. Y'all need to put that on t-shirt right now. I will buy it immediately because I love me some Javon Evans. But Javon is basically going to go into the ring and do what, what he does best. And the young is going to do what he's going to We cut to commercial. We get back and we see Ava. And if you have not been watching Level Up, you don't know. This might be your first introduction to Miss Carly Bright. For those of us that watch Level Up on, you know, the Peacock, she's actually really, really good in the ring. And she's phenomenal. And her gymnastics background is something to be impressed. I need her and Kalani Jordan to have a match, like, immediately. See who can outmaneuver the other. But Carly is talking with Ava. And she ranked 13, so she just missed the qualifiers by one place. But she wants a chance tonight to prove what she's got. So Ava is going to give her the chance and she's going to be fighting Lola Vice later in the evening. I'm like, damn. I was like, I like you, Carly, but Lola's about to knock you out, which sucks because I like Carly, but it makes sense that Lola wins. I also like that while this conversation is happening, we just see in the background Tatum Paxley, like, go peeking through the blinds in this whole entire thing in Ava's office. I miss, I love me some Tatum Todd. I love her. So a lot of setup for things like that. And then for me personally, boys, we get into my match of the evening. Javon Evans versus Oro Mensa. Match ruled. Yeah, I agree. I thought it was really good. I also thought it was a great presentation for Evans in this sort of like full length fight. Like, I mean, this is his first one, isn't it? It's like his first like double digit fight, right? I'm trying to think. The the last one that he was in, was it doubles? I thought it was only single digits. Him versus Dragunov. I think that probably went maybe like eight or nine minutes, I think. Yeah. Okay. I just, this one felt like a showcase. That's what I was yeah. just like. It was, this one felt more showcasey than that one did. That one was like, oh, introduction. But this one felt more like, here's Javon Evans. I like that. I thought that they both did well. I thought that, or not thought, I think that this boy has a huge career ahead of him. Like, my yeah. God. Like, just, I mean, even in the Dragon Off fight, it was, my eyes were on him the whole time. And then in this one, I was just like, man, he just gets, it just gets more and more in under your skin, I think, every time you watch him. And I, I, the more and more I watch him, the more and more I'm like, you are going to do great things, my man. You're going to do some great things. I'm very excited to see where he goes from here. Because I, like I said, I felt this. This felt like a showcase spot for Javon. I like that they found a way to switch up because I feel like when he was going to be facing Noam Dar, it was kind of a given that Noam was going to win. 
because it seems like they're setting up something with Noam and Trick. So making that switch to Oroman was smart. It allowed us to not have Javon take another loss. And I liked seeing Oro so wrestle in a match because he surprised me. I In the like first couple seconds, I didn't think he'd be keeping up with Javon. But I like what Mensa did was he basically, every time Javon went for something in his like, you know, he went for a move that required him to like, bounce three times and on the second bounce Mensa cut him off with something kicked him in the leg javon came back off the ropes and he just kicked him in his head he you know caught him and and it was like he was using his experience or he just never let him get that like running start he needed to get to really cut off the high flying so i thought it was a really good match for both of them we got to see a lot from both guys it was my match of the night too and i, I agree i think Evans has a huge career ahead of him. I like the fact that we're kind of not teaming him up with Trick Williams, but like he's getting a push by association with Trick, which is kind of funny because it definitely has that like big brother, little brother kind of like feel to it. And which is nice because Trick has kind of stepped up into that role after having been kind of behind Carmelo Hayes. So, you know, it, it's fun to see what they're doing with him. And the fact that this guy is 19 years old, like not only is he going to grow so much in experience, physically he's going to grow and change so much as he like starts to like fully develop into like an actual adult. But his just natural charisma is great. I also think based on some of the stuff that we've seen that I could see him doing a heel to turn soon like not soon but like eventually but not being the like dark heel but like being the arrogant kind of like whatever i just go out there and have fun like but i'm gonna win and you know that kind of thing he just i could see him playing really well into a heel role i could also see him having some time over with wwe speed and uh, getting that title too at some point because that seems like that's right up his alley yeah and you guys both hit it on the head for me too i think the other reason i love this match is unless you watch oro's work in nxt uk you really haven't seen him wrestle too much here in the States for NXT. And the fact that he got to wrestle against Javon Evans, which is a really great up and comer too. I'm telling you, man, I, depending on what happens over the next couple of weeks and months with the North American Championship, I'm actually might want to put Oro in that title scene too for that NXT North American Championship. I think he could do really well as like a solo fighter, you know? I mean, because... Every time I see him fight, I'm just like, it, it's, he gets better. And I think he's got some pretty natural talent. You know, when I first got into, when I was first introduced to him, it, it was literally just as one of like backup singers. And, and, and you, ne you know, you don't take him seriously. And then it's like, so when he first started fighting, when I first saw him fight for the first time, I didn't take him seriously. And it took me a little while to kind of, to kind of take him seriously and it's like and then when i sort of said okay let me let me look at this at a different angle and i watched him fight like actually watched his fighting and style and all that i was like he's actually pretty good why why is he a bench warmer you know he should be out front i think i really believe and i'm kind of going along with what you're saying mikey I, I think he needs to come out of noam's shadow like really does he needs to get out on his own his own wrestler i think i really believe that I think he's got some talent and I think that yeah he should why not go for a title a title challenge I think it'd be a good one I like the guy I do too and I hope with this showcase I hope NXT starts pushing Oro a little bit more because mm -hmm. I think he has a lot to add and on top of that too again because he comes from NXT UK you don't really have a lot of French born superstars so I think especially of French superstar that is also of African-American descent. I got to see how good Oro it was in NXT UK. So here now I'm hoping that NXT here in the States will use him to that ability. But this was my match of the night. This was so much fun. Javon picks up the win here. And, you know, whenever paths collide, I'm still waiting for West versus Javon because that match is going to go ham. I'm excited. So we go backstage where Charlie Dempsey all by myself because it's backstage interview and he just says, you know, regardless if they're here or not, I'm going to defend this championship. And that was the extent of this promo. Somebody stop letting him talk. We talked about this before. 
Oh. We're moving on. Yeah. So this is where things got spicy for me because this was a whole cluster. So Wesley comes out and he cuts this short promo in the ring. And you can tell he's getting choked up. He talks about, you know, having to get surgery done. He was told that he was supposed to be out for a year. But in four months, he was able to come back full force. And he wasn't sure if he was going to come back to wrestling. He was in a dark place. You could tell he was getting choked up. Before he could continue, the Oba feminists rise because then Oba Femi comes out. I I know NXT crowds can be crazy or not. I I like and I find it funny that every time Oba finishes his sentence, the whole crowd is just like, ooh. I'm like, it's kind of ridiculous. But Oba Femi kind of gives a backhanded compliment a little bit because he says that Wes's title reign was something for the history books and it has inspired Oba Femi. But Oba is the champion now, so he's going to take this title to newer heights, more so even than Wes can. And uh-huh. before Wes, yeah, and even before Wes can get another word out, we get Viking biker dad Ivar come out. And I'm like, it's so weird the juxtaposition between your wrestling gear and persona versus your real life gear and persona. So Ivar comes out. He says that he has unfinished business with Oba Femi. And then as soon as everybody tries to continue, the loudest booze happened for Josh Briggs. I'm like, damn, the audience turned on this man in a heartbeat. But hey, that's what we want because Briggs is your heel. I was like, I think he just got the heat from DiJack now that DiJack's no longer in NXT right now. But Josh also lays claim to the North American Championship. And so what does Les- what does Wesley do? Wesley does what Wesley does best and propose that we have a multi-person match because all of Wesley's title rates are either singles matches or multi-person matches. There was no in between. This man took on everybody and anybody. But Oba Femi is not that kind of champion. And he says, you three can fight it out. And then the winner of that can come face me and have credence to this title. So I'm like, oh boy, we're getting a triple threat match between Josh, Ivo, and Wes to see who gets this championship match at Battleground. I didn't hate this. I liked it. I mean, obviously, we see what they're setting up here. I thought at first maybe they were going to be setting up a fatal four-way for the North American title at Battleground. I like that Obafemi wasn't dumb and is like i i don't have to work harder for you all want the title you figure out who's gonna face me like i don't have to do what you want to do especially the fact that briggs and ivar have already had shots at his title you know we'll talk about it when we get to it but the way that the show ended leads me to believe that other shenanigans will still lead us to have a multi-person match at battleground for that title and I think it's really the best way to do it because if we're going to take the title off of Oba, the best way to take it off of him is in a match where he doesn't have to lose to not be the champion anymore. Yeah. And, you know, let's let's just talk about what happened at the end because these two kind of go together. So after our main event happens, which we'll talk about, we get, again, the backstage of NXT is kind of rank, rising in the ranks of the most dangerous places in wrestling because I thought the parking lot was dangerous. The backstage is proving that it's even more dangerous because mofos be dropping like flies left and right backstage, especially in this episode. But after our main event, we cut backstage and we see Wesley on the ground, Josh Briggs on the ground. Ivar got the worst of it with all the stuff on top of him. And then I, at, before we got to see the faces, I hear this stink like European Scottish. It's like, damn, is it who I think it is? And sure enough, camera pans up. It is the Gallus boys. With Mark Coffey, Joe Coffey, and Wolfgang, Mark Coffey is sporting a really cool curly Q mustache. I was just like, I think I'm in love, you guys. But the Gallus boy said this is only the beginning and that everybody is putting on notice. I'm like, here we go. Mark is about to enter this North American championship picture. It's about to get wild. And I'm just looking around. I'm like, damn, Wes, you're at a size disadvantage on this one. But that makes me even more excited because Wes is going to get creative with his offense yep. when we get this match. So I was like, I, is, does that mean we're getting a fatal four-way? Hell yeah, let's do this. Number one contender, fatal four-way. It all goes to hell, and we set up a multi-person for Battleground. Yeah. All I know is this, at, when this happened, I was just like, where the hell have you guys been? I've been training like, The Rock for his <laughs> in-ring return at WrestleMania. Yeah, it's like, y'all were there, and then you weren't. 
and now you're back again. I was like, where the hell have you been? Because there was like a member that was like, they were like the thing. And then suddenly they were like gone. Once they got attacked by Ridge Holland, they disappeared off of they television. They did. For and it was like, hot, what happened? For a hot minute. And now they're back. I was just like, like Keenan and Kel. Here we go. Yeah, it was definitely, you know, an exciting way to end the night, bringing them back. And I think it's also a good, you know, boost of because they're it's something new but it's not something new because it's a return having them get involved in the north american title picture potentially tag pictures other things storylines going on just being you know a face of violence i think it, it's it's exciting especially building up the battleground and i do think we're gonna see some things go on that are gonna lead to this multi-person match at battleground for that north american title it gets me excited because at first yeah. i was just like you know what i'm kind of digging you know i've Josh and Wes throw Mark Coffee into the mix, and we got ourselves a really fun North American ch- title scene, which I feel we've been lacking for the last couple of months due to people getting thrown all over the place in terms of where they landed on the rosters. All right, we go from something I like to something that made me very, very sad because then we get this tag team match we alluded to earlier the OC versus Rich Holland who had to figure out who his partner was going to be because nobody wants to work with an angry man. I'm like, we're still on this? Okay, anyways. But Andre Chase volunteers <laughs> Riley Osborne that he's on team with Ridge. Not even vo- volunteers, like Riley Osborne. So it becomes the OC versus Ridge Holland and Riley Osborne. I will say, though, the best thing to come out of this and the segment later in the evening which was made even better by Andrew when he sent that text to us this morning. The father-daughter kind of like kinship, friendship, like sibling, like Daddy Ridge protecting child Thea Hale is a dynamic that I didn't know I wanted until I got it. I really like Ridge and Thea's like kinship and with Ridge being the protector of like innocent little Thea. Yeah, I picture it's it's like the pit bull and the kitten kind of thing like but i picture them like i i'm really hoping they go full bore into this and i we see thea split from chase you and she's like the crazy cat that will still claw the crap out of anybody that gets too close to her but in order to do that you got to get past this mountain of a you know man that's just willing to do violent things if need be. I thought the match itself was a decent tag match. I think the more important thing was the building the story. So the loss didn't really bother me because I kind of expected it. I thought it was a little sloppy at the end, but I, I thought what they were telling as far as like building where we're going with where I hope they're going with Ridge and Chase U was the more important part. I could see Ridge snapping at some point and just beating the crap out of everyone in chase you and then thea surprises everyone and like sides with him yeah that'd be awesome so we'll we'll see where that all goes but i'm not saying i'm super excited for this whole but i'm starting to get excited i'm cautiously optimistic it also has potential to be really bad so i think it's just like let's just see where it goes i know where everybody else we all want it to go you know but will they do that I don't know. I hope they do because I would love to see like Thea and Ridge be this sort of like dark element, you know, and just this, yeah, just she walks out all like what you got and he's just like towering behind her just sort of as a intimidation factor and she just goes after everybody. What I would love to see (laughs) is and for all the D&D nerds out there, because not only are we wrestling nerds at BC WrestlePod, all eight of us are also TTRPG nerds as well. We all love D- D&D. For those of you who don't know, that's Dungeons & Dragons, as well as other tabletop games. I, with this, Thea and Ridge is giving me, like, if anyone has watched Critical Role Season 1, this is giving me Grog and Pike energy and I love it. <laughs> like rest the in format. Version. A darker yeah. version. Yeah. yeah. This gives me Harley Quinn and Bane vibes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like I could see her going full Harley Quinn and him being that the Bane, the sort of the muscle behind her. I, you know, that I could totally see that. And I, I would too. I, I, no one wants to see a total nice guy turn for Rich Holland and have him join Chase U and just continue doing Chase U things. 
No, let's I want to see him destroy Chase U from the yeah. inside. Let's be real. He kind of is unofficially <laughs> due to the fact that he wore red. Yeah, I noticed red. that too, yeah. I was yeah. like, he's unintentional. What I would love for this to be is, is that this be the biggest swerve in history where Ridge infiltrated Chase U to get Thea out of there. Yeah. <laughs> then they go take on the world. I I'd need a vigilante. I need vigilante Ridge. That's what I want. Absolutely. Give me the NXT version of the father-daughter duo from Kick-Ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there you go. I want it so bad. See, now we're talking about this and NXT. Like, well, like we say here on all the reviews, if it makes sense, they won't do it. <laughs> yeah. But this is the one time I want to be proven wrong. Damn it. We cut to Lexus King still being a creep. Back to and the so, dyed beard. Oh, God. whoever his stylist is or makeup artist or, you know, like beard person needs to be fired. Fire immediately. Burn that beard to the ground. But we actually start with all this off. Lexus King and wants to like hang out with people. And then Jasmine Nix comes in trying to get people to sign the Get Well Soon card for JC. And everyone's like, no, thank you, because JC's kind of mean. So nobody wants to sign it. Lexus King first says, it's like, yeah, I'll sign it for some person. You mean JC, right? And so Lexus signs it. Jasmine reads it. And it's not even JC's name. And Jasmine's like, what a loser. What the heck? And I was like, thank you, Jasmine. You've been saying everything. You're speaking the minds of everybody else who watches this product i was like damn it made me like jasmine even more just because of it yeah this, yeah, but she this was came stupid. Out better in the this was stupid and not in the good way yeah yeah we need to figure out what we're doing with lexus because he's still being a creep and I, I don't necessarily hate the dude you know but it's like what the hell are you why are you here i just why are you invading my space i need it's you like, to either don't figure out what the the exactly don't 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 use my oxygen I need you to figure out what the hell you're going to be and just be it, please. I'm literally like ready to be behind you, dude. But I need you to give me something to to hang on to because right now I got like something. I feel like he would almost work better as like the overly confident but kind of dumb guy in a faction with with other women. Either that or he needs like a big muscle, you know, big, strong guy around him that can kind of be his enforcer and allow him to be the arrogant cocky kind of douchey heel that he just needs to be a part of something else i agree because right now and they're not doing anything stable with him so he's just floating around and nothing is sticking yeah so we leave lexus and jasmine we get a small video vignette of all the you know hyping up carly bright because then she has her match next against lola vice this was a quick Four to five minute match. This was awesome to kind of watch Carly get more main screen television time, but ultimately Lola beats her down. Yeah. I was like, honestly, I'm not mad at it because we want to keep building Lola up. And then we get part two because then Carmen comes in and like almost kicks Lola's face. I'm like, see, if you're going to give me this version of Carmen, I'm kind of here with her kicking people's faces. Like this full on dynamic entry. And so her, Shayna, Lola, and Natalia have a brawl. The, the Lola and Shayna get out of the ring. Carmen and Natty get on the mic, and this sets up a tag team match for next week. I'm like, I kind of wanted to do this at Battleground, but all right. I still feel like we're setting up something for Battleground with them because mm -hmm. I feel like if this feud was going to be over, it'd be over already. I honestly, I thought it would have been over after the Underground match. I do like that we're getting something with Lola Vice. We're giving her more in a like, full-on story, and she didn't have to be involved in the title pictures. I do really like the team of Shayna and Lola, because I think, you know, in character, Shayna respects Lola because Lola is legit, like, can still fight and everything like that but also like she's so serious and stone-faced and lola's just like dancing up there and doing all kinds of stuff and she's just like come on dude like what are you doing like it's <laughs> she's the serious one and she's got this goofy friend who doesn't care about like singing and dancing in public but they both kick ass so they also have that in common but i'm just not i'm I'm not 100% into Petrovic and Natty doing this stuff. I hope what we're going to see is Lola come out on top after everything and look super strong. Because I feel like right now, even though when we're watching it, for the most part, it looks like Lola and Shayna are, or at least should be, whooping them up. Like, every time we see them interact with each other, like, they're overly, like, they have to, they have to mm -hmm. fall 
to Natty, right. you know, and it's just if they're that good that they just beat the crap out of them every time they come out, then how come they're not winning? Like, how come they haven't just ended right. this beef right now? But yeah, I, I hope we build to something interesting. And I hope, I mean, honestly, I hope that Petrovic and Vice both come out of this strong because they're the two NXT younger stars that are trying to make names for themselves. I love that Shin is getting to do something because I still feel like she's such an underused person, especially since she left NXT. And Natty is a legend. Like, they don't need the NXT push per se, but I'd like for everyone to come out of this better than they were when they went in. So we'll see where they go. Yeah, so we'll get the match next week. And we'll see if that leads to something more. This doesn't really relate to anything we watch, but hopefully next week we also see what are our plans for Roxanne because we got three weeks until Battleground. And it's yeah. kind of wild that we don't have any story for our NXT Women's Champion right yeah. now. Yeah. So hopefully they change that next week. So we cut backstage. Chase you and Ridge Holland, right? Again, Riley Osborne, like, is able to accept Ridge into the group. So it's like, one of us, one of us. Sure. Look, as long as we get more Ridge and Thea, because that little interaction, that high five was the cutest thing on the planet. I'm like, I don't care about the rest of you, Chase you, right now. I'm focused on Ridge and Thea because this is the dynamic that I want in my life yeah. right now. It was a cute segment for what it was. We get our bumpers for next week, which actually includes some really fun matches, hopefully. So, we're getting Thea versus Fallon for the qualifier. Jada Parker versus Brindley Reese. And after they were scrapping earlier in the night, that's kind of my, on my most anticipated match yeah. now. We also get the confirmation that it is going to be a triple threat for the number one contender spot for Oba Femi's North American champion. And the winner of that triple threat at the time of the show is going to go on to face Battleground. So that might be changed into the Fatal 4-Way next week. But who knows what's going to happen and go down with all of that. Then we get into our main event. For the NXT Heritage Cup Championship, this is the challenger, Tony D'Angelo, taking on the, which in this case is Charlie Dempsey. I actually like this batch a lot better than I thought I was going to. I still think Javon and Oro is my favorite match of the whole evening, but this was all right. See, I know Charlie Dempsey's a good wrestler. And actually, I'm kind of like, I kind of dick Tony D'Angelo doing the Heritage Cup yep. full set because I was like, he kind of fits in really well. I was pleasantly surprised. But first round goes to Tony. Then Charlie picks up a win in the third round. And then in the fifth and final round, Tony ends up winning after the family and Miles and Damon Kemp fight and go into the backstage area. But by the end of this, Tony D'Angelo is your new NXT Heritage Cup champion. I actually really like the match. Like I said, more than I thought I was going to. Yeah. I thought they built the structure right. Like it makes sense. You know, you, if you want to build to the full five rounds and you want to build some tension, you know, having that draw in there, having them alternate victories, I had a feeling by the second round that this is where we were going to go. I, it was a solid technical match. I like the fact that they told us that D'Angelo has a lot of like, like collegiate, oh, well not collegiate, but like Greco Roman style wrestling background in high school and in college. And I feel like Tony, similar to Noah, brings much more intrigue to this title. There's like story and things you can develop off of there. Be like a purely technical wrestler in that. It just in general, but especially in this style of match, needs to have more charisma than Charlie Dempsey has. He didn't look bad technically in there, but if you're going to be that style of wrestler, you know, we've seen it in Ring of Honor with pure style wrestlers, and it's there need you need to have, you need to be able to keep us intrigued while you're doing this technical wrestling, you know, Brian Danielson, William Regal, a huge fan of Dean Malenko, and Dean Malenko was not the most charismatic wrestler, but his thing was, first of all, mm -hmm. he was phenomenally skilled in the ring, not just mm -hmm. as a technical mat wrestler. But also, he could at least come across like a dude that's going to whoop your ass. Like, And Charlie Dempsey just doesn't have that in-ring charisma enough to carry this. And I think D'Angelo taking this could push this title into the more intrigue of like the North American title and those other titles. So it actually matters. So maybe we'll actually get a division built out of this. Oh, yeah, I was just happy to see Tony D'Angelo take it off of Dempsey. I can't stand that man. And every time he would walk out with that 
with that cup in his hand and he'd start talking. I'm just like, could someone please slap the crap out of him? And then someone finally did and took the cup. And I'm very excited about it. <laughs> this whole match, I was like, Tony D'Angelo, you better freaking win this cup because I can't handle him. I can't handle him anymore. It was really getting to that point where I was just like muting my f- my television anytime he opened his mouth. So, yeah, I like this match. It was a good match. And it the outcome that I wanted happened. Nice. And we already talked about what happened to end the show with the Gallus boys returning. So we have reached the end of this week's NXT. So boys, let's go ahead and give our final empanada ratings. I will go first. You know, I enjoyed a lot of this NXT. I could still do without some of the backstage stuff because I feel that it didn't really add too much. But I'm going to give this a solid 7.5 out of 10 for me. I thought the in-ring was a lot of fun. I'm really happy to see Saul and Lash move on to Battleground because that those two alone are going to make this ladder match go insanely bananas. And I'm excited to see yeah. who else next week between the two matches we're getting is going to fill that out, which I honestly, as of right now, if the correct women get placed in this match, I honestly think that ladder match is probably going to be my MVP of Battleground, hopefully. But we'll see what happens with all of that. I thought the wrestling was solid. Some of the backstage stuff was okay. But overall, I actually thoroughly enjoyed this NXT. So I'm going to give this a 7.5 out of 10 for this week. Andrew, let's go to you next. What do you give your rating on the empanada scale for NXT? I give it an 8 out of 10. It was a B- minus for me. I thought there were some really solid matches, especially the women's North American qualifying matches and Evans versus Mensa. Those were two sta- three standout matches for me. Some good story progression. Promos weren't all great, but were quick, at least. And hopefully we see some new possibilities for the Heritage Cup championship. But I feel like they could prevent some of the issues that they're having as far as the quality and consistency by just planning better as they move forward in the future. But all in all, I thought this was it was a really solid night. Yeah, I enjoyed it. Yeah, I, I mean, I gave it a basically like a 7.75 i'll land in the middle <laughs> uh, because i mean it was good. i mean it could, i could go up to eight to be honest it was a really good episode i thought i thought you agree and i agree that the promos were short and sweet i mean some of them were, were ridiculous and unnecessary but at least they were short yeah. and the yeah the women's matches were fantastic the my match of the night was of course javon and Aura. That was just a fantastic match. Overall, I th- even the lesser of the matches were not that bad. So I, I overall, I really enjoyed watching this episode. Really did. I'm so happy you boys enjoyed this. I thought this was a phenom- This was fun. And this, if this is what we're gonna get every single week leading up to Battleground, I will say that Battleground might actually be pretty cool. Which was really weird to say because the build to Stand and Deliver was kind of hit or miss. But for the most part, Stand and Deliver, well, delivered. So I'm excited to see hopefully that Battleground continues the trend that has been happening for the last year. Where Battleground was my favorite NXT pay-per-view last year. So hopefully with everything that is being planned for Battleground, it lives up to that. But before we log off, as I mentioned, when this video goes live, for those of you that are going to be at the New Jersey Wrestle Show, I will be joining the East Coast Collective. So Adolfo, JVL, and Jesse, along with myself, will be hosting a table at the convention. Again, almost said something that out of context means totally different things. But thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of the Dynamic Dominance Trio. If you enjoyed this review, check out everything else we got on the YouTubes. Follow us at BC WrestlePod across socials check out the podcast versions of all these reviews because they are fantastic but we're gonna get up on out of here so as always from us three and the rest of the bc wrestle pod boys remember take care of yourself love one another stay biconic you beautiful bitch. and as always you deserve to finish your story we'll catch you on the flip side but until then ta-ta for now